Hello, I'm Ted Ross. I'm the CEO and co-founder of SpyCloud. Chris is our B Vice President of Business Development. And so I'd like to start by asking a question. How many of you are confident that your personal credentials are not floating around the underground right now? <laughs> to see. I'm glad nobody's raising their hand. Let me ask you a more important question. Uh, how many of you are confident that your employees, your customers, your spouses, and your children's credentials are not floating around the underground? And of course, nobody stood up the first time. Nobody's going to stand up the second time. Uh, so that's what SpyCloud's all about. We, we are a team of security researchers that uh, use human intelligence tradecraft to interact with the, the bad guys. And our whole goal is to capture the information that they're stealing before they're posting it to public forums or paste sites. So we're getting information before any of the, any of the other scanners in the world can find it. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and so we do it in a very ethical way, by the way. We're, uh, when I say human intelligence, some people get a little bit uh, uh, antsy about that. Um, we do have alternate personas, and we are acting like bad guys, but we're doing it for a good cause, and I think you'll benefit from that in the long term. So uh, uh, let's jump into the demo real quick. Uh, this is our portal. Uh, every customer who has an account sees this portal. Um, this is probably not the way that large organizations would operationalize our data, but a smaller, a smaller business would use the portal. Uh, it gives us a great way of showing off our data, and I want to make sure on the screen that it's visible. Okay, so to start using the system, uh, we scroll down to the bottom of the screen, which is what Chris is doing right now, and we enter in our domains, the, the domains that you own, your company domains. We took the liberty of adding a number of domains into the watch list, and you can see that there are a number of records next to some of those domains, and the record count is pretty high. Keep in mind, this is just one domain that that organization might own. Typically, a large company will have hundreds, if not thousands, of domains. So they would want to go in there and populate all those domains in this watch list. Uh, the records that you see next to the domain, those are credentials that we have in the system right now. This is a production system uh, that end with the at domain. So uh, in Equifax's case, I got to bring out Equifax. <laughs> uh, we have, it's hard for me to see, 6,000 or so credentials that end with at Equifax.com, right? And experience right below that, I don't want to you know, make Equifax look bad. That's actually not a very bad number. We see some, some domains with over 100,000 records. Um, there's so many records out there that we don't expect a person to go through this portal and try to figure out how to take action on all these we automate everything. So if we find passwords, we'll send it down to a tool that you'll have installed on your, on your site. Uh, the tool won't send anything to us, it'll only take information from SpyCloud, and it will compare what we're finding to your active users, and when there's a match, when there's a compromise, we'll reset the password. It's very easy to install and operationalize. And so let's go back to the dashboard, Chris. Uh, you'll see a number of green icons in the middle of the screen. Uh, those icons are different asset types that we're collecting from the, the underground. Um, and the reason we break it out like this is because we want to show you what a threat actor is seeing. And they'll use this information in very nefarious ways. They'll start to figure out your geolocation, right? We have uh, your uh, geolocation. We'll, we'll look into the PII category and find out your mother's maiden name. We'll, a number of these breaches contain your, the answers to your secret questions. So we'll get your dog's name, your favorite food, you know, all that kind of stuff, your high school. Um, tie that together with phone numbers, and you can make a really interesting phishing campaign targeting an individual, something that will get them to click on a link. If you're in Munich, I'll send you three RSVPs to the next you know, beer fest. And when you click the link, you're, you're owned, right? More importantly, a threat actor will use this information to steal your credentials. And most of you are probably thinking, well, I have two-factor authentication on my, on my bank account or whatever. Uh, it's pretty secure, and I agree completely, absolutely must use at least two-factor authentication. Uh, but threat actors now will basically go into your system, and they will say, hey, I just lost my phone. I need a new token and they'll start answering those security questions. And if you've ever gone through this process before, you know it's pretty easy to do. And at the end of that process, you have a new token and you've just bypassed two-factor authentication. So uh, let's go back to the dashboard. And I want to point out an icon uh, called infected users. Um, this is a, a different category than passwords. Uh, sure, we have 
passwords for infected users, but we also have the, the URLs that they're logging into. And so when somebody falls in this category called infected users, that means there's an active breach, there's a machine that's compromised, it has a keylogger. We don't reset passwords for, for infected users because if you reset the password, the new password is also compromised, right? So we pass this information over to your security operation team and we let them handle it from an incident response standpoint. And go back to the dashboard, flip up to the top timeline. Uh, all the yellow dots you'll see at the top of the screen represent a breach that had credentials that matched the watch list at the bottom. And you'll see back, the oldest date is in the 20, 2011, and the far right is the current month. And you can see that how, how the breaches have trended over time. You know, a couple years ago, it was common to read about a breach in the press once every quarter, once every six months. Now, uh, you're reading about it every week. Uh, the work that we do, we're finding 10 new breach databases on average from private sources. They're not in the press on a daily basis. So it represents about 40 million records every single week. It's, it's a very large problem right now. And so, uh, anyhow, let me wrap up. Uh, we're a young company, we started last year. Uh, we launched the company in August. We had our first paying customer in November. Uh, we were in stealth mode and we remained in stealth mode until June of this year. Uh, while we were in stealth mode, we applied to NATO for an innovation challenge and we won. We were the only US company to win the, the uh, uh, NATO Innovation Award this year. Uh, we've been growing significantly ever since we came out of stealth mode. We're a very healthy business. We have stellar recommendations. Um, Booking.com is one of them. And uh, I'd like to make one announcement before we leave. Uh, John Stewart, the Chief Security and Trust Officer for Cisco, and Alan Kessler, the, the CEO for eSecurity of Thales, just joined our board of directors. Please come see us, and we'll get you set up with a free account at our booth.